the bank statement in our system, the cleared balance should be marked off and we should have a, a green checkbox ready to go down here. And we could still have some uncleared items down below, which we could, uh, which will be the reconciling items. Also, just remember that if I go into this edit tab, that's where the information is up top that we put in uh, when we first started the bank reconciliation, including the ending balance. Let's close this out. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to start with the deposits as we did before. So we'll go into the deposits and just see those. And let's go back and forth, remembering that we typically want to go from the bank statement on back to uh, because everything on the bank statement should be on our books. Everything on our books possibly will not be in the bank statement. So I'm looking first for this uh, 347250. Also recall that the deposits should be easy for us to reconcile as long as we have a good accounting system so that we're not trying to tie things together, meaning marking off multiple things on our books in order to match a singular deposit, which can happen if you have like uh, credit card charges or cash that you're depositing into the bank as a lump sum, which consists of actually multiple transactions. So you need to use the clearing account uh, if that is the case. If you're finding the deposits to be difficult, you're probably not properly using the clearing account so that your accounting system will result in a deposit into our books bank account in the same for format that actually will hit the actual bank account. Okay, so we have the date and we have the amount in, in, our, in our system from the bank. And that should be enough to tie out, especially if these are electronic transfers because the date will be very close. So 347250, let's look at that. We're going to go back on over here and say, okay, let's do it this way. 327450. Now this one, you can see this was actually uh, deposited in January. This was an outstanding item in January. It's clearing in February. There's the timing difference that we would uh, expect to be seeing. So that looks good. That's what we would expect to happen. Let's make this one green. We'll make it green. And then we're looking for the 12,250, 12,250. Boom. On three, two in our books, it's on uh, two, five here. So we, our books will always be earlier than the bank books or, or the same date possibly. The 450870. So there's the 450870. And, da, da. and then let's mark that off. And then we have the 750. The 750 is here. And then finally, we have the 400. The 400 is uh, here. Okay, so the, everything is marked off. That looks good. If I go back on over, we'll say this one has been marked off. We have found everything. So note that we found everything on the bank statement in our books. That makes sense. We still have some things in our books that are not on the bank statement. That too could make sense as long as these are outstanding items that we expect to clear possibly in the following period due to the fact that we entered them in our system, but the bank doesn't know about them yet. They haven't yet cleared the bank. So what would we want to do then? We would want to look in our checking account as of the current day, note that when we do the bank reconciliation, we don't actually do it on like February 29th. It's going to be sometime after February 29th in practice because we would have had to get the bank statement in order to start the process. And, uh, and that would take, so it's probably going to be at least 15 days, you would think, or something after, you know, it might be sooner than that, but it's going to be after that time frame. So we can look at our actual transactions to see if these did clear in the following month in March. If they did, then it doesn't mean that they're wrong here. It's not like we're going to change the date. It just means that it means that they, they, they're they good. They're legitimate. There's just a timing difference. So these will be the differences between our book balance and the bank balance. Also, just realize that if you built your books from the bank feeds, meaning you, you have gig work or you got paid by YouTube, then you're not going to have these timing differences. Why? because you're you're not really doing a full service accounting system you're just building your books from the bank feeds instead of double checking to the bank feeds which is a good way to do it in certain cases 
but it's not like the full service accounting system. So you'd still want to reconcile in that case, but in that case, you would just check them all off. They should all be good unless there's something funny going on. It should be a really easy process to reconcile if you're building your books directly from the bank feeds, but you can't always do that as we've discussed. And we'll talk more about the bank feeds in a, in a future course or section as well. So that's going to be uh, the general idea. And so that looks good. So we haven't entered anything new. If we get our total, we're at the 51,981. And that's going to be here, the 51,981. Check. That one is done. And so next time we'll continue with the uh, decreases and wrap it up from there. Nothing new. So we don't really need to look at the trial balance. We haven't entered anything new. Let's just save it for later grab some coffee and then get back to finish it finish it up after lunch or whatever <laughs>